Hi, I'm Carissa Enright, Associate Clinical Professor at Texas Women's University, and this short video explains how the neurotransmitter serotonin relates to your diet. We will start by looking into the body. Here is the stomach, the lungs, the liver, large intestines and small intestines, and now the brain. Serotonin can be found in the brain where it is primarily responsible for the mood and behavior. But this is only a small portion of the total serotonin in the body. 80 to 90 percent of the serotonin in the body is in the gastrointestinal tract. Here serotonin is responsible for motility. Too much serotonin results in nausea and diarrhea. Too little serotonin results in constipation. Serotonin must be manufactured in the body. The clue to how serotonin is made can be found in the chemical name, 5-hydroxytryptamine, or 5-HT for short. The precursor to serotonin is tryptophan. Tryptophan is an essential amino acid. The body cannot make it. It comes from foods that contain protein. High levels of tryptophan are found in eggs, primarily in the egg whites. It's also in all poultry, beef, and fish products. Among the vegetables, beans and legumes have the highest tryptophan. When you eat these sources of protein, the body starts the process of separating the amino acids from the protein in the stomach. However, tryptophan is not absorbed into the bloodstream in until it reaches the small intestines. Once in the blood, tryptophan is further metabolized into serotonin. Most of this transformation happens in the liver and from there serotonin circulates throughout the body to be used for neurotransmission. However, none of this serotonin is available to the brain. The blood-brain barrier does not allow serotonin from the body into the brain. How does anything get past the blood-brain barrier? The complete answer is too complex to describe in this film. For simplicity, I will show diffusion and active transport. Small water or lipid-soluble substances simply diffuse through the membranes, moving from high concentration to low concentration until they reach equilibrium. But all the amino acids are too big for diffusion and must rely on active transport through the barrier. To illustrate, we will concentrate on only these two, leucine and tryptophan. The name for this particular transport system is the L-type because it favors leucine over all other amino acids. Tryptophan is only one of many amino acids in high-protein foods, and this transport system does not allow much tryptophan to get into the brain. But once inside the brain, the tryptophan will be transformed into the serotonin used inside the brain. We would certainly have too little tryptophan in our brains if this slow transport was the only mechanism at work. The addition of insulin makes a big difference in this transport process. When insulin is present in the blood, tryptophan has an added boost and will rapidly increase the amount that is transported. From a dietary perspective, what induces the secretion of insulin? Carbohydrates in the diet induces insulin. Fruits, grains, starches in potatoes and corn, and of course, honey and other sugars. For mental health, we need both carbohydrates and protein. Ice cream has it all, a true feel-good food. In conclusion, a no-carbohydrate diet results in depression. A low-protein diet results in depression. 
and certainly anorexia nervosa results in depression.